Thanks for checking out this movie review video. This is for the 1980 film Alligator, and it's my first time seeing Alligator. Heard good things about it. Uh, it's one of those, you know, Jaws ripoff films, which one of the other great Jaws ripoff films that I personally love is Joe Dante's Piranha. So after seeing this one, I, I like this one too. This one is plenty of fun. Love Robert Forster in it as Madison, uh, Detective Madison. And uh, yeah, it's just a fun film. A lot of people had recommended it to me, and I'm glad I finally watched it. So to everyone who recommended it, thank you. You were right. It's good. Directed by Louis Teague, who also directed Cujo and Cat's Eye, just to name a few. Written by John Sayles, who also wrote Piranha the end the howling so joe dante collaborator and story by frank ray perilli who was also involved in writing mansion of the doomed dracula's dog the best of sex and violence as well so just a few titles out there ramon the animatronic alligator had many operating issues apparently <laughs> within this film um not uncommon i did a review for another film with an animatronic alligator uh, eaten alive, Hobie, Toby Hooper is eaten alive, and same story, animatronics, very finicky apparently, so no surprise when I read that about Ramon the Alligator for uh, this film. Apparently Brian Cranston, yes, the actor Brian Cranston from things like Breaking Bad and Malcolm in the Middle, was a production assistant on this film, and he actually has fond memories of this film. Apparently, after the passing of Robert Forster kind of recently, I think it was like a year, maybe two years. No, I think it was last year, actually. Um, he had been doing some interviews about stuff and had said, had talked about the fact that he had worked with Robert Forster on Alligator. It's kind of a lesser known thing, but uh, it's just kind of cool to think someone who's that big was <laughs> involved with a film like this. Joe Dante ended up turning the film down, apparently. Apparently he was initially offered it. Uh, I'm assuming he was kind of like, I'm not really feeling like doing another Jaws ripoff film. But I, it makes you kind of wonder what the film would have been with him at the helm. I, I think it would have been as good or potentially better, in my opinion. Because I'm high on Joe Dante. He does an excellent job. Obviously it's inspired by Jaws, like I said. Uh, oh, and the other thing, the the thinning hair that Robert Forrester talks about, and I'm doing this because I have the same thing going on, so I connect with that aspect of Madison always being, you know, pointed out that his hair is thinning. Apparently, that was Robert Forrester's idea to incorporate that into the film, so it was a personal thing that he was dealing with slash struggling with, and I think it's good to have it in the film because it calls out what's very obvious going on there. And it's something that connects to people like myself who literally are balding, which I'm sure everyone watching this knows that. Uh, so let's get into it. The alligator wrangler in the very beginning falling and getting torn up is a pretty intense way to start the film. It gives you an idea that people will get killed by an alligator and it will be, well, I don't want to say it'll be gruesome because for the most part, a lot of it's the actual violence is kind of off camera until you get much later into the film. But you're going to get some, you know, you'll get some good death scenes, you'll get some good gore here and there, so uh, I think it sets a good tone, it sets an intense tone to start the film out, and it lets you know kind of what you're in, the, in uh, what do you have in store for you. A quick but effective backstory for how Ramon ends up getting into the sewers, a uh, super quick backstory, like literally not much actual story to it, but to be honest, it's really all you needed, that's why I say quick but effective, it is effective. All you need to know is this was an alligator who was someone's pet, got flushed, that's why it's in the sewer. Boom. Let's move ahead. So I kind of like the fact that they were that quick about it. It does kind of save us time. And that kind of goes to another thing with this film is that runtime was good. Like it, it had a good pacing to it. It moves pretty well. Not a whole lot of downtime to it. So I think they did a really good job, especially in a time period when films could end up feeling pretty stretched out for time. So it was a pretty tight script. Uh, the guy, Gutchel, who was the head of that pet shop, um, you really hope that he gets chomped by Ramon when you find out that he's been taking those animals to the pharma pharmaceutical company for experimentation. Not that, you know, the ones that they, you know, the, the pharmaceutical company says that, like, they have those dogs there that they raise themselves and then, you know, they experiment on them and they dispose of them. 
by the way, dispose of them in the sewers, which is how Ramon ends up getting to be, like, supersized because they were working on this testosterone, like a synthetic testosterone, which, you know, increases the size of animals. And there's something kind of, that kind of goes to that with one of the dogs that they find where they're kind of like, this looks like this dog, but it's it's way bigger, way faster. So that kind of gives you the idea of, oh, okay, this is how Ramon went from being a normal-sized alligator to a super huge alligator that has the ability to bust through a sidewalk and take out cars in addition to people. So, um, hey, they laid the tracks just fine for this to be believable, I mean, believable within the context of what the world created. But you hope that Gutchell gets it when you see that he's taking animals from his um, pet shop to be turned into experiment. Not that it's still okay what the pharmaceutical company is doing, because that sucks too. And you hope that all of them get chomped, but they don't. That sucks. You know Madison is tipped off to what's going on with the pharmaceutical company when Helms, that head scientist, says they cut the larynx of their test dogs, because that was revealed when they were looking at the initial, one of the initial ant dogs that they found in the sewer, is they were like, oh, well, the larynx was cut. So if you're paying enough attention, you remember that when that scene happens, and uh, Madison knows that as well. So you're like, ah, so now he's onto it. Now he knows what's going on. Pretty solid scene with the guy who walks in with the fake bomb. I thought it was relatively intense enough. Uh, it, it shows you very early on Madison's skills his ability to really deal with situations and give you the idea that he is the guy for the job when it comes to taking on Ramon, even though after one kind of failed attempt to find Ramon in the sewer, they replace him with a big game hunter, which, you know, just seems like a bad idea. Um, especially that particular big game hunter because he's just all about his ego and not about actually doing much of anything, just being like, oh, I'm the best. I'm not going to take anything seriously. I'll just do this. But yeah, um, the fake bomb situation lets you know how good Madison is at what he does, and he's got a cool head, knows what he's doing. The layout of sewers are actually pretty interesting. They made really good use of it. You do really feel like it's a pretty large sewer system. They show enough of it, and um, yeah, I mean, it's dark, it's creepy, it's claustrophobic, which is very important for thinking about people being stuck down there with a not just normal size alligator, a massive alligator it's cool seeing Ramon a little bit in the background when Madison and Kelly were initially in the sewer and looking at the map is really really cool yeah they're just kind of like taking their time to like look at the map see where they need to go and then you see a little bit of light behind them and like the movement of Ramon going past and you're just like that's a very nice moment it's creepy it lets you know they're potentially in trouble and then obviously Kelly is the one who ends up getting chomped in a pretty good scene where they're trying to go up that uh, that ladder and then he gets grabbed and like pulled pulled down and then you see him like yelling for a little bit and then pulled out of frame. It was cool. It was well shot. I really do enjoy that scene. Man, Kemp is really written as a pure ass. <laughs> I mean, who teases someone about losing their partner? Yeah, that reporter Kemp, I'm sure a lot of people were rooting for Kemp to end up getting chomped as well which obviously he does when he goes snooping around in the sewer because this guy's just a jerk. Like he continually is bringing up to Madison the whole, what do they call it? The Baldwin incident, which you do get explained much later, thankfully, because otherwise we'd just be like, what is, what is this? Um, so yeah, but a real jerk. He just keeps poking and poking and poking. He's, he's arrogant. Yeah. So it's always good when people like that get chomped by the alligator. Ramon. Note the moving machinery is dangerous poster that looks like an alligator in the police locker room when they're reading the article about the Baldwin incident. All the police officers in the locker room are kind of like gathered around each other reading this article pertaining to Madison when Madison comes in. And if you notice when they're like going back and forth, the guy who's reading it behind him is a poster that says, what was it again? Um, moving machinery is dangerous and it has some machinery parts that are in like the shape of an open alligator's mouth with teeth. So notice that there are a bunch of those types of things in the film that come up, which I'll, I'll mention another one, uh, next. When Madison is watching coverage of Kemp's death, there's a poster behind him, a piece of art, and it has the name of the artist under it, which is Ramon Santiago. 
another one of these little things where it's like, it's behind you, it's stalking you. Um, really, it, it's kind of a cool visual thing when people pick up on it, because that's literally kind of a visual way of, of showing like the stalking of the alligator without showing the alligator stalking. It's just kind of like metaphorical. It's cool. I like how they bring bazookas to take on Ramon initially. <laughs> You know, when they have that SWAT team that kind of does that initial sweep through the sewer, they literally show them, like, gearing up, and there are bazookas. I was like, okay, did they really think it was that large at that point? Because I didn't think it had been seen yet. Uh, so it's a little weird that they brought bazookas, but, you know, kind of funny. A nice little surprise when you find out that Kendall is the original owner of Ramon, now all grown up and very interested in reptiles. I guess she's a herpetologist at this point. Um, so that's kind of like a cool tie-in. Obviously, she never becomes aware of the fact that that actually is Ramon, but it's cool that they she kind of like says something, and then you're like, oh, this is her all grown up. That's kind of a cool connection. I like it. Uh, a great moment when Ramon busts through the sidewalk and crawls onto the street, starts wreaking havoc, takes out some cars, takes out some people. And that's when, you know, the film really kicks into high gear because that's when the rampage really does start. And let's be honest, you know, that's what everyone was looking for. Like, when does the rampage start? Oh, busting through a sidewalk to signal that this is how it starts? Pretty epic. That is probably the coolest moment of the film. Not probably. Well, the wedding scene is pretty great. But I'm going to go with the sidewalk because that that's just kind of less expected. Like, I didn't think going into this film that they were going to do that. And it's cool. All the alligator products being peddled at the lake, I think, is really funny. It's kind of like an over-the-top swipe at, you know, how consumerism is. Like, people will try anything to make a buck. They'll capitalize on anything. Oh, a murderous alligator loose in the city? Let's make alligator products and try and sell them to people. I think someone was calling it like Alexander the Alligator, buy your Alexander the Alligator replica. Like, yeah, it's just over the top. And it, it it's ridiculous. Very of its time, though, because it's like when, I think it's like New York City style, like everyone's selling something on the corner, knockoff products type thing. Nice little reveal of how the synthetic testosterone creates an insatiable hunger because that signals to the audience that Ramon's killing will not stop. Like, Ramon has to be killed in order for this whole thing to stop because we know at this point that Ramon is huge because of the synthetic testosterone from the, from the pharmaceutical company that they were testing. And then when, the, when Helm says that it was causing an insatiable hunger, we're now connecting with, in our minds, oh, that's Ramon. Ramon just has to eat and eat and eat and eat. And now that he's not in the sewer anymore and those dogs aren't being dropped off to be eaten, it's got to be people. So makes the danger level higher. And of course, Madison gets canned because Slade wants the questions to stop and the mayor can make that happen. Slade being the owner of the pharmaceutical company who just calls the mayor who he has a very good relationship with, basically just based on money. And says, hey, uh, we got someone poking around. Madison, we need this to stop. So then he gets fired. And this kind of shows that whole, like, can't trust the government, can't trust corporations. This is a, you know, a big theme going on with these types of films in the 80s. And even now, to be honest, like, that sort of thing never gets old within horror films, to be honest. Um, yeah, it just doesn't. The kid getting munched in the pool is pretty solidly done, I think, considering that you don't see a whole lot. This is what I was talking about earlier, where, like, some of the stuff's, like, very off-screen, but I think, granted that it was off-screen for that death, I think it was shot well, and the fact that they go back to it pretty quickly, the way they do the quick cuts of the alligator, and then they show all the blood in the water, I think it was still pretty well done. It was very effective at getting the point through, and, you know, being relatively... I don't want to say scary. It wasn't like scary, but like a little bit of dread to it. Finally, finding out what happened with the Baldwin <laughs> incident makes you understand how tough that is to deal with for Madison. So it kind of like you were already sympathetic to him because he's the protagonist of the film. But once you find out what actually happened with the whole Baldwin incident, it makes you feel even more for Madison. It connects you to him as a character more. And, uh, you know, it just kind of develops the character a little bit more because he's 
you understand at that point what he's been dealing with. You understand the mental struggle and you kind of feel like, how is he keeping going in this situation? And then it also makes you think back to him then losing Kelly because, you know, it's the Baldwin incident all over again to a degree. Like he takes that on as something that he caused as his issue. He took Kelly down there with him. He could have gone by himself, but he was looking for someone else to go with him. So he feels responsible once again, like in the Baldwin incident. Funny scene when Brock is eaten in Booger Alley. <laughs> Brock, who was the big game hunter. Booger Alley, I like the name of that. It looks good close up, but the wider shots showing Ramon's full body looks really, really goofy. Uh, let's be honest, that's when the animatronics looked bad. Um, luckily, they weren't showing it for a long time. Uh, I think in that instance, they should have chosen to just keep it like those closer shots. Because when it's just the closer shot of like Ramon's head just like chomping Brock, looks good. Then they go the wider shot and you're showing like his, his tail and his back legs moving. Looks pretty bad. Looks pretty bad. But good scene nonetheless. I like it. And I'm sure everyone was like, yes, finally, Brock is getting it. That's what we wanted. It seems that Ramon has revenge on the mind when he starts heading to Slade Mansion. I don't think it's an intentional revenge thing. But for the audience members, it's like, ah, now he's going to get revenge. So it's for the audience that revenge is coming to the pharmaceutical company when um, he starts making his way up to the mansion to, you know, munch on everyone at Slade's wedding. I think it was like his daughter getting married or something like that. I don't know. But um, great scene. Like, that that's a wonderful scene. Like I said, like, it was between that and the sidewalk scene. Um, the wedding is a very close second for me. I had a hard time figuring between the two. But I'm, I'm sticking with the sidewalk for my favorite because it was so cool. But, yeah. Revenge. Here comes revenge. Because the pharma pharmaceutical company made him this way. This is this whole you reap what you sow situation playing out on screen. And the audience realizes this. The scene of Ramon crashing the wedding is really fun. Especially when he whacks people with his tail. Sending them flying. It's, it's that fun as in like it's ridiculous and over the top. Like I know it's a very large tail and when it whacks people it's going to knock them down. But it's not going to fling them like that. Like, people are going flying. And it just made me laugh. I really like it. I think it adds extra charm to the film. Um, you know, because it's a ridiculous kind of over-the-top film. But, you know, that's what one of the things I like about it. Ramon blowing up looked actually pretty good. His explosion scene was not bad. Not bad at all. I enjoyed that. And a new, in the end, a new baby alligator plops into the sewer, ready to grow up and go on another rampage in another 12 years, which is what we assume at the end of the film. Obviously setting it up for a second one, which there is, Alligator 2 The Mutation, which when I'm doing this review, I haven't watched it yet because I didn't want those films to kind of like bleed into one another when I was doing this review. So um, yeah, when I'm putting this review out, I am going to have Alligator 2 The Mutation review the next day. So both reviews should be up pretty close to one another, so if you're an Alligator fan, check them out. But yeah, I enjoyed this film. Um, oh yeah, very last thing. All the comments about Madison's thinning hair shows how that's what others focus on most when Madison is actually just trying to do his job. I think that's another thing that that aspect of the film really did a good job of focusing on, is how everyone's focused on these really stupid kind of trivial things, like his thinning hair and pointing it out to him. Whereas he's just like, I'm trying to do my job. Like, can we focus on what's important here? So I like that aspect of it. Anyway, um, like I said, I did enjoy this film. So out of four stars with half stars in play, I'm going to give it a three and a half star rating. I did enjoy Alligator, and I kind of think I want to own this one. I know there was a, a recent like 4K um, uh, edition that just came out through Vinegar Syndrome, Severin, one of those. I can't remember, but... I'm going to look into it anyway. would love to know your feelings on this film. Go ahead and put it in the comments. Like it, hate it in between. We can talk about it, get nerdy about it. Uh, and also do me a quick favor, hit subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I really do appreciate that. It keeps me motivated, keeps me going. Uh, it is quick, it is painless, it costs you no money. So why not just subscribe? Also hit the notification bell button because then you'll know when I'm putting up new videos, which I'm doing for a week, which I think is a good amount. But regardless, thank you very much for taking your time to check out this video, and until next time, keep it brutal.